Welcome to this video on the NCAECC standard subdomain 2 to 4, which is all about protecting your organization's email service from cyber risks. This subdomain is important because email is one of the most widely used forms of communication, and it's also one of the most common ways that cyber criminals will try to infiltrate your organization. The objective of this subdomain is to ensure that your email service is protected from cyber risks, and to do that, there are two key controls that you need to implement. Contro 2, 4, 1. Cyber security requirements for protecting email service must be defined, documented and approved. This means that you need to establish a set of guidelines and procedures for how you will protect your email service. This should include things like what types of email services you will use, what kind of data will be sent via email, and what kind of security measures will be used to protect that data. When creating your email security policy, it's important to include the following elements. A clear statement of the purpose of the policy, which should include the objectives of protecting the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of email communications. A definition of the scope of the policy, which should specify which email services are covered by the policy, and which individuals, systems, and networks are subject to the policy. Guidelines for the use of email services, including the types of data that can be sent via email, the use of encryption, and the use of anti-spam and anti-virus measures. Procedures for monitoring and enforcing compliance with the policy, and for dealing with incidents and breaches of the policy. A schedule for reviewing and updating the policy to ensure that it remains relevant and effective. Control 2, 4, 2. It states that the cybersecurity requirements for email service must be implemented. This means that once the guidelines and procedures for protecting the organization's email service have been defined and approved in Control 2, 4, 1, the organization should put them into action. This can include implementing email filtering and anti-spam measures, encrypting email communications, and regularly monitoring the email service for compliance and potential security breaches. An example of a technology that can be used to implement these requirements is email filtering software. This type of software can be used to block unwanted or potentially malicious emails, such as spam or phishing emails, from reaching the organization's email inboxes. Another example of a technology that can be used is email encryption. Email encryption allows for secure communication by encoding the email's content so that it can only be read by the intended recipient. This can be particularly useful for sensitive information such as financial data or personal information. When it comes to monitoring the email service, organizations can use tools like email archiving software, which can be used to store and search through email communications for compliance and security purposes. Other tools that can be used to monitor and protect email service include intrusion detection and prevention systems, IDPS, and security information and event management, SIEM, systems. It's also important to include in the policy regular review and update process, to ensure that the organization's email security practices and technology are up to date and in line with current best practices and regulatory requirements. When it comes to protecting your organization's email service from cyber risks, there are a few key controls that you should be aware of. Control 2, 4, 3. It focuses on ensuring that your email service is protected using advanced and up-to-date techniques. Control 2, 4, 3, 1. Analyzing and filtering email messages using advanced and up-to-date email protection techniques. This is a crucial step in protecting your organization's email service from cyber threats, such as phishing emails and spam. There are many different tools and technologies that can be used to analyze and filter email messages, such as email gateway solutions, anti-spam and anti-phishing software, and machine learning-based email filters. To meet this control, organizations should implement advanced and up-to-date email protection techniques to analyze and filter email messages, specifically phishing emails and spam. This can be done using a variety of tools and technologies, such as email filtering software and anti-phishing tools. Example. A financial institution receives a large volume of email messages on a daily basis. They implement an email filtering solution to automatically analyze and filter messages, specifically looking for phishing emails and spam. The solution uses advanced techniques such as natural language processing and machine learning to identify and block these types of messages before they reach the inbox of employees. Control 2, 4, 3, 2. Multi-factor authentication for remote and webmail access to email service. Multi-factor authentication, MFA, 
is a security measure that requires users to provide two or more forms of identification when accessing email service. This can include something the user knows, like a password, something the user has, like a security token, and something the user is, like a fingerprint. MFA can help to prevent unauthorized access to your email service, even if a hacker manages to obtain a user's password. To meet this control, organizations should implement multi-factor authentication, MFA, for remote and webmail access to email service, in order to increase the security of email accounts and protect against unauthorized access. Example. A healthcare organization wants to protect the email accounts of its employees who access email remotely or through webmail. They implement MFA requiring employees to provide not only a password but also a unique code sent to their mobile phone or generated by an authentication app. This additional layer of security makes it much more difficult for an attacker to gain unauthorized access to an employee's email account. Control 2, 4, 3, 3. Email archiving and backup. Email archiving and backup are important components of protecting your organization's email service. Archiving allows you to retain important email messages for a specific period of time while backup ensures that you can restore your email service in case of a disaster or data loss. To meet this control, organizations should implement email archiving and backup solutions to ensure that email messages are stored in a secure and tamper-proof manner, and that they can be recovered in the event of a disaster or data loss. Example. A retail company wants to ensure that all email messages are stored in a secure and tamper-proof manner, and that they can be recovered in the event of a disaster or data loss. They implement an email archiving and backup solution that automatically archives all email messages, including attachments, and stores them in a secure, off-site location. This way, if their primary email server goes down, they can quickly restore the email service and access all the messages. Control 2, 4, 3, 4. Secure Management and Protection Against Advanced Persistent Threats, APT, which normally utilize zero-day viruses and malware. APTs are a type of cyber attack that is designed to persistently infiltrate an organization's network, steal sensitive data, and remain undetected for long periods of time. To protect your email service against APTs, you should use advanced threat protection solutions that are able to detect and block zero-day malware and APTs. For Control 2, 4, 3, 4, one use case scenario could be a company that operates in a highly regulated industry, such as finance or healthcare. This company would have a lot of sensitive information flowing through their email system, and would need to take extra precautions to protect against advanced persistent threats, apt. In this scenario, the company would start by implementing advanced email protection techniques such as email filtering and analysis to detect and block phishing emails and spam. This would be done using a combination of software and human expertise to identify and flag suspicious messages. Next, the company would implement multi-factor authentication for remote and webmail access to their email service. This would ensure that only authorized users are able to access the email system and view sensitive information. The company would also implement email archiving and backup to ensure that they can recover from a cyber attack or other data loss incident. This would include regular backups of email data, as well as an email archiving solution to keep a record of all email communications for compliance and legal purposes. Additionally, the company would implement secure management and protection against APT, which would include utilizing up-to-date antivirus and anti-malware software, as well as implementing a zero-day protection system to detect and block new and unknown threats. This can be done by utilizing cutting-edge technology such as AI-based threat detection and behavioral analysis. Finally, the company would validate their email service domains using a system like the Sender Policy Framework, SPF. This would help to prevent spoofing and phishing emails from appearing to come from the company, and would also help to ensure that legitimate emails are not blocked or marked as spam. And all these steps and technology is aimed to protect the email service and its data from cyber risks that can be very serious and can cause a lot of damage. Control 2, 4, 3, 5. Validation of the organization's email service domains, e.g., using Sender Policy Framework, SPF. SPF is a method used to prevent email spoofing. It allows you to specify which servers are authorized to send email on behalf of your organization's domain. By validating your email service domains using SPF, you can help to ensure that only authorized emails are sent from your organization's domain, and that no one can impersonate your organization to send phishing or spam emails. Control 2, 4, 3, 5 is about validating the organization's email service domains using something called Sender Policy Framework, SPF. 
This is an important step in protecting the organization's email service from cyber risks. An example use case scenario to understand this control would be a scenario where an attacker is trying to send phishing emails to the organization's employees, pretending to be a legitimate email from the organization. Without SPF validation, these phishing emails may be able to bypass the organization's email protection filters and reach the employees' inboxes. However, with SPF validation in place, the organization's email service can check if the email is coming from an authorized sender within the organization's domains. If the email is not coming from an authorized sender, it can be flagged as suspicious and potentially blocked. In terms of implementation, organizations can set up SPF records for their domains in DNS, which specify the authorized email servers that are allowed to send emails on behalf of that domain. This can help to prevent spoofing of the organization's domains and protect employees from falling victim to phishing attacks. To implement this control, the organization can work with their email hosting provider or IT department to set up and configure SPF records for their domains. They can also use tools like online SPF record generators to create the records easily. It's worth noting that email is one of the most common vectors for cyber attacks, and organizations need to take a multi-layered approach to protecting their email service. The controls listed in 2, 4, 3 are just some of the ways that organizations can protect their email service from cyber risks. Another important aspect is to ensure that employees are properly trained to recognize and respond to phishing emails, and to implement security awareness training on a regular basis. Additionally, organizations should also have incident response plans in place to quickly respond to and contain any cyber incidents involving email. Control 244 is important because it ensures that the organization's email service remains secure and up-to-date. The cybersecurity requirements for protecting the email service should be reviewed periodically to ensure that they are still effective and relevant. This can include reviewing the email protection techniques that are being used, the effectiveness of multi-factor authentication, the adequacy of email archiving and backup procedures, the measures that are in place to protect against advanced persistent threats, and the validation of the organization's email service domains. It's also important to note that the threat landscape is constantly evolving, so it's important to regularly review and update the organization's email security practices and technologies. This can include staying up to date with new email protection techniques, testing and evaluating new multi-factor authentication methods, and reviewing the organization's email archiving and backup procedures to ensure they are still effective. When it comes to reviewing and updating the organization's email security practices, it's important to involve a cross-functional team that includes IT, security, and business stakeholders. This team should work together to identify potential vulnerabilities and risks, and to develop and implement strategies to mitigate those risks. As a conclusion, it is important to have a comprehensive and comprehensive email security strategy in place with regular reviews and updates to ensure that the organization's email service remains secure and up-to-date. This includes implementing advanced and up-to-date email protection techniques, multi-factor authentication, email archiving and backup, and protection against APTs. Additionally, it's also important to validate the organization's email service domains.